Hello and welcome. Welcome to this episode of the Daily Soul Bites Show. I am your host, Bola Abimbola. And today we have a very special guest, Jim Charles. He is my mentor, I should say. And um, welcome, welcome, Jim. Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I'll read a bit about Jim before we start. Um, so Jim is a, is a channel and a Reiki master. And is a co-author with Dr. Max Rempel of a book called From Galaxy with Love. And Jim does a regular, a, a recurring webinar every two weeks on Saturdays at 11 a.m. where he connects with people from all over the world at the Ukolo community. Thank you for joining me today, Jim. Thank you for having me. It's that is a important. very, very short bio. I would love to hear a bit more about, because I believe in synchronicities and in every lifetime, in every lifetime when we come, there is something that we do from when we are born and we kind of carry on and we are fulfilling our purpose and all is as it needs to be. It would be really, really helpful for us and interesting to hear about some of that synchronicity and how you have come to be in this place. All right, I will do that. I'll try to make it very short. <laughs> Although when I was young I and when I went to college and even before, I was able to see things and know things. And But the church that I belong to, and I say I was belonging to many churches because my parents kept changing churches, but they did not believe in that. They they thought that that was negative and evil. I went to Christian college then, and there I was able to see and hear many things, and they said it was evil and that I had to cast it out. So mm. I stopped doing all that when I was in Christian college. But the sensation and knowing that there was something there never left. Mm. I just stifled it. I pushed it away. Mm -hmm. And then finally, I I lost my job in uh, 2011, I believe it was. And I went into Reiki because my friend said, you need to do something. And, and I, I certainly wasn't being very successful with any kind of applications I was put in because I was too old. And they were, were looking for youngsters. So... And looking for young people who had greater energy and learned faster and all that. So I started learning Reiki. I'm really cutting this short, but I started learning Reiki. And after a year or so, I became a, a Reiki 2 um, practitioner. And I was working with Max Rempel, the person I wrote the book with. Mm -hmm. and Or channeled the book with mm -hmm. and one day i was working on him and i heard voices not outside but in my head and i said max i'm starting to hear voices and of course he's laying on the table getting a reiki treatment so he's all relaxed and he just went uh-huh and i said Okay, well, that's not much of a response. So after the session, we talked about it. And I told him that I heard these voices. And he said, oh, you're hearing the aliens that are around my house. And I'm going, what? <laughs> and he goes, yeah, I've had them here since 2008. So I said, okay. And this was May of 2013. So... The second time I came to his house that week, uh, the next week, uh, I heard the voices again and they were telling me how to do Reiki better and this and that. And all of a sudden he said, I told him, I hear the voices again. And he said, I'm going to ask them a question. And I go, okay. I didn't expect them to answer, <laughs> mm. <laughs> but they did. Mm. And they answered through me, I started channeling to him the information that he asked about. Mm -hmm. And that was the beginning of my channeling uh, mm -hmm. career, because as soon as he heard the information that came from this first, very first channel, 
the next time I was there, there was a there was a uh, re recorder above my head, and he was recording everything that was being said. And if I channeled again, which I did, he would record it. And then the third time I was there, then the week after that, he was videotaping it. And so by September, I had my own video channel. I had he had created a whole site for me mm -hmm. called Human Colony, where mm -hmm. I still am, mm -hmm. uh, 11 years later. So that's, okay. that's, that it's, that's the story. And Thank you. Thanks for sharing that, Jane. That was a very abbreviated story, but that's what it basically was. Yes. Yeah. So it was from a Christian background, and then you came into this, into more, into deeper spirituality, and that you know that is the same for me. I came in from Christianity into this, into spirituality, and I love to hear more about this light language because my meeting you through Ukolo has led me to really deep in my own development of uh, of light language channeling. And I yeah. think it would be really good to hear because I consider you to be quite an expert in this. And there's so many, so many of us have come through working with you. You know, a number of people are working with you and I think you do phenomenal work. So thank you for that. Thank you. you. Know? And I would love to know, if I were to ask you, what is light language? Light language is more than one thing, actually. Uh, light language is the ability to bring in a language from either a spiritual community, a spiritual being, an angel, or even an alien or a, another kind of spirit. The reason for light language is to pray for you in a way that you can't pray for yourself or pray for someone or something that they do not know how to pray for it. Mm. It comes through as a way of in, enhancing you, enabling you to reach into a different section of spirituality. Now, other forms of light language are just messages from beings outside our world or angels outside our world, not necessarily prayers. They're information sometimes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they're just letting you know through your own light language that they are working with you. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes when you have light language and you're by yourself, you have no idea what they're saying. Mm -hmm. But they are sending a message to you. They are sending information to you. And this is all within your subconscious and self-awareness. Mm -hmm. But... You will eventually know and feel and understand what these light languages are doing within you because they are above your pay grade, so to speak. Mm. They are above you. They are higher thought processes. And so as they are the higher thought processes, they are giving you and edifying you in ways that you have no idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that's fine. Another thing is you can ask specifically with a prayer language or a light language to help with certain things. You don't have to just speak it and be not conscious of it at all. But you can say, I need to pray for my friend. I need to pray for this or that, uh, the world, the war. And then light language can come through that will spiritually guide that prayer. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. there are many things about certain situations that you have no clue of. Mm -hmm. Many people do not understand that their thoughts are not the thoughts of everybody else. Mm -hmm. And so when light language comes through, it permeates the, the confusion and permeates the thought processes that are going around in the world and makes it more clear what kind of prayer is being given. Mm. Mm. Does that make sense? Yes, it does, because it's really something about how light language circumvents the arguments of the ego and goes straight into the subconscious. 
It it's all of the minds. There are certain things that we want to pray for, we want to intend for, we want to incline or align with. But because of the arguments and the doubts and the imposter syndromes and all the inner critic, all the dynamics of the ego systems, we are not able to allow and surrender to what could be. So I love how light language really circumvents all of that. And it Correct. becomes quite effortless. And it goes straight into the subconscious and it allows us to really let go from a deeper level. So I feel I feel it's quite powerful because I, uh, as you know, I channel the Aldorians. Um, and I started out channeling the six dimensional Aldorians and I couldn't understand what was being said, but I knew that it could be interpreted. And you gave me a lot of interpretations and that gave me some confidence because I had no idea what I was saying. It was just coming through. And then I began to hear the word 10, 10. And it was the 10th dimensional Aldorians because now I can actually translate what I am channeling, which is another different level. And that's really beautiful. And it's all about love. It's all yes. about healing. It's all about allowing us to really step forward as the empowered beings that we are. So I really value, value it. And thank you for that explanation. Now, there are many of us, because I know that before I began to do like language channeling, there was so, so, so much resistance. But I know that there are things that you share that really help those who are wanting to step forward as like language channels. What are some of the things that you would advise those who are wanting to do this to do? Well, first of all, I would say you must allow. It's not a forced thing. It's not mm -hmm. something that you force. It's not something you say, eh, I, this is going to come through. It's something that you allow. You ask the spirit for, that you pray for, that you are looking for, and allow it mm -hmm. to come through. You must open yourself to it. Do not be afraid of it. Fear is a destroyer. You do not be, um, you know, afraid afraid of anything really because if you're asking in your meditations for light language and and you are praying they're not going to give you something negative they're not going to bring forth something that is not what you prayed for mm -hmm. now there are tricksters out there and everything but if you are praying for that particular thing if you are praying for that particular outcome then you will get that. You mm -hmm. will not get something else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So intention is key. Intention. Our intentions. Because we are really powerful co-creators. And yes. what we intend is what we're going to attract to us. Yes. Exactly. You're going to attract that which you ask for. Mm -hmm. It's the law of attraction. It is that if you ask for it, are they like the Bible says, if you ask for bread, are you is God going to give you a stone? No, he's going to give you bread. So it is that when when you ask for the spirit to come on you, the spirit will come. Mm -hmm. Now, not everybody knows the spirit very well. Not everyone is very religious or you don't really have to be religious you have to be spiritual in in your thought process you have to be given over to the love of god given over to the love of the of that which you are seeking mm -hmm. so that you can be part of that and a lot of people go i don't know how to do that mm -hmm. and what it is is that you just it it sounds harder than it is because God is there watching out for you, looking out for you, being a part of you. And if you open yourself to him, he's the one that will bring this to you. And sometimes I've heard people say, fake it until you make it, mm -hmm. <laughs> which means start babbling until you, until it actually comes out. But you know what? Many times when people start doing their babbling and think that it means nothing, it's actually starting. It's mm. actually part of the language. Mm. You just have to be confident enough to let it go. Mm. 
And it's in sound. Sometimes it's in light. Sometimes it's in symbols. Yes. You know, it comes in very different forms of of, of, of sensations. Yes. And we, you know, because sometimes we think it's only going to come through our voice. But, some, yes. but we might be needing to draw symbols or we might be needing to actually sing it. Because I've heard Correct. people sing light language or or they say it or and or they play it music. You know, they actually right. play, play, on, play on the piano. And those sounds are actually light language coming through. Correct. Also, so, healing comes through light language. Yes. Yes. Okay. You can heal someone with as you're. I've seen it happen where people are that are open to the light language and the, the healing that when they're doing their energy healing, they will actually say light language and more power comes mm -hmm. because that is, there are many out there that are great healers in the universe, many spirits and many, and God and Jesus and Buddha and the Hindu gods and all the, all those that are attached to God mm. will come forth if you call them. Mm. Mm. And, I, and I, you know, cause you did mention something about this law of attraction and some of us who know that there is still a lot of trauma imprint within us may feel a little bit reluctant to even want to dive in there because yes. we, because we're thinking, oh my goodness, I've got all this toxicity inside of me. What manner of beings am I going to attract Correct. if I begin to call that in? So the, obviously there's a lot of trauma recovery that needs to go in. There's a lot of inner work that we need to do. But I also know that there are different beings for different people. Are, oh, yes. Are, are the beings in terms of dimensions or or densities is are there are categories of light beings that come in to to work with different people for instance yes there are some people that can channel certain densities better than others mm. or they want to they don't want to be able to channel many different species or things they want their home planet or their family planet to be the one that speaks through them and that's very common and it's very good because they they speak best through them, mm. and but um, others will like myself will channel many different beings because I'm open to it, and mm. I and they see who, that I am open to it. Mm. Mm. Are you willing to channel anyone today? Maybe the Aldorians, maybe. Are you oh, open? I can channel the Aldorians if you wish. Yes, that's because I know we have that in common. That would be nice. <laughs> yes. One moment and I will bring them to you. Okay. Thank you, Jim. I am Rohenjid. I, I am a 10th dimension Aldorian. Thank you for coming. That is amazing. Thank you for coming. I would Great. love to know, greetings. I would love to know what makes your civilization unique. I'd like to know Reason, more about civilization. Yes. Our civilization is unique because it's not seated the way your civilization is. Your civilization is like a melting pot for many different species who have come from many places and have distributed their DNA among you. However, our planet has only one or two different seedings, so our DNA is much more pure, much more, we would think, authentic. But you might not think that way. But we are... A species that has only two different, should I say, a two different uh, beingnesses. And that is that we live in 
peace with one another at this point and that we have only a few languages that separate us not like your world that has many hundreds of languages but ours only has a few and we learn all of them as a child and we learn how to do the things of kindness and and of compassion and forgiveness as early as we can teach it i do not know if i said that correctly mm -hmm. but i know that your beingness is not the same i shouldn't say that as a whole but some of your beingnesses are not the same they are those that will just let their children grow up and learn for themselves we do not do that as much we are much more strict in our early learning periods Does that answer that question to some yes. degree? Yes, so I would like to know a bit about your location, where you are in the galaxy. Well, Dorians, yes. We are far away. <laughs> we, Your planet sees our planet, but only as a tiny dot. We are beyond... Mm, I do not know how to describe it exactly. I believe the we have a place beyond what you can actually see as well, because we are in a different density, and that causes us not to be able to be seen. Mm -hmm. But the planet that we originally came from will be able to be seen, because it was a third-dimensional place many, many millions of years ago, mm -hmm. and still is but it does not inhabit us. We do not inhabit it anymore. Is that the planet Aldor? Yes. We are beyond it now because it is a different density. Mm -hmm. I would like to explain that we are hundreds of thousands of light years away. There are more than one species of Aldorians. There's Andorians and Aldorians. Mm -hmm. And so, as that is, we have been in space for a long time. And so we have terraformed and brought cultures into many new places. Mm -hmm. Where I am speaking from is 105 light years away. 105,000 light years away. And so I am here to explain that our world is so different. The beings there are not corporeal, almost. They are corporeal, but they have a lightness to them that your beingness does not. Mm -hmm. And I can understand that because we do have this duality system here on planet Earth, on Gaia. Yes. So that makes, that creates a certain degree of density which yes. other planets do not have, other existences do not have. So we are unique in that sense. I wanted to know what your perception of God is. God? Yes. He is all things. He is everywhere and every in everything. We have discovered that God is the creator of every bit of matter, the creator of every bit of energy, the creator of every bit of everything. So he is the energy that runs the universe. He does have now, I should say, we know and are aware of nerve endings, thought processes, places where only it can be understood that God is. He is an incredibly large and accessible being, if you know how to access him. Mm -hmm. We are honored by his presence when he comes in this consciousness. Mm -hmm. I know some will say 
They do not quite understand where I am coming from. But our language and your language are far, far apart in so many different densities that it's hard for me to communicate cl with clarity. Mm -hmm. There is my understanding of this consciousness of God being consciousness and being everything that exists is part of that consciousness. Correct. And that each and every, everything in existence is an, is a unique piece of God who Correct. is also, and the name as a higher being is, people give, yeah. give that higher being different names. Um, there are many names for him mm -hmm. on your world as well as ours. Mm -hmm. The reason for this is because many see him in different ways and perspectives. And so they use that perspective to deal with him personally. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just as your people choose how they address him, we choose as well. Thank you. Thank you. Can you tell us a bit about the open contact? When it's going to happen from your perspective? Yes. I think you can tell us about open contact. Very well. We believe that your first contact, as you would call it, will happen in 2025 at the very end, around November at December of that year. I believe those are the right pronunciations for the months. Mm -hmm. We see that the first that will come is the Zhuog. They are from outside of your galaxy, but they have been to your world many times. They have met with your leaders as soon as 1950s in your perspective. They were turned away because they wanted first contact then, but they were not permitted. Also, the one called Valiant Thor, who has many names, also visited at that time. He was not turned away because he did not want first contact. He wanted other things and other thought processes. But the Zhuog were turned away and told to come back in 2025. They made a document that would say that they were permitted to come back. And so they were given that choice to come back and they are coming. Now, there was a time period where the Zhuag was going to ask them if they wanted an extension. And they are still haggling about an extension at this time. Uh, but I do not see that happening. When you say extension, you mean to delay the arrival? Correct. Mm -hmm. Could you spell the name Zhuag? Could you spell that? X U. O G Juog. Juog. And where X are U O G. Where are they from? They are from beyond this galaxy and beyond the next galaxy. They are two from two galaxies away. Are they linked are from, to the They are from a spiral galaxy. Spiral galaxy. Are they connected to the Yael's by any chance? You Yael are in this galaxy. The Yael are the Yael's are in our galaxy. Yes. 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 That's true. That's true. So they are. So the the Zhuog are really um, they're quite distant to us. That is why they are taking so long of a time to get to your planet. They have already left and are on their way. Mm. Right now, they are visiting several planets in the Orion area. They will next go to three planets in the Pleiades and then to Earth. What kind of beings are they? Are they technological beings or are they farmers or 
What's their cultivation? They are highly technological. They have a 15 ships the size of Chicago, and they have a hundred more trailing them, smaller ships. Mm. They are very highly armored, or they have a lot of armament, I should say. They have not used it at all. It is only there for their safe keeping, according to them. We do not sense any problems with them at this point. So we are fine with their arrival in the Ryan area. Mm -hmm. I, I came to understand that there are there is the consequence, the consequence of actually having hope, open contact um, comes from our own spiritual practice. And those of us who are aligning to that unconditionally loving higher self are the ones that will encounter open contact. There is another direction that there, you know, that civilization can go. Those who yes. are not aligning to the higher self will you will become much more embedded in technology. Um, could you tell us a bit about that? Because sometimes people will, you know, because open contact is is not going to be what everybody will experience. Correct. There are some who do not want open contact. What what direction? Because it's either open contact or another direction. What's the other direction for those who do not necessarily want to have to um, to meet, uh, you know, any of the intergalactic beings, for instance? It is that your planet and many others have free will, and they can do what they wish. They do not have to meet the visitors when they come, but it is like anything else. They are there, and if they want to visit with them, they will, and if they do not, they will not. I must tell you that also that the Zhuog come in peace, and they are going to, when they get there, talk to your nations for 10 days before they make a decision whether to open their contact there. It is a decision because they want to be safe. They do not want to be attacked, and they don't want to see people thinking that they are attacking, so they are going to be very hesitant about showing themselves at first. Mm -hmm. What the Zhuog look like? They are humanoid. They have very, very round eyes. It's very large, round eyes. And their mouths are slightly smaller. They do look humanoid. They do look, they do have other features that are not quite humanoid, but they have two eyes, a smaller nose, and a smaller mouth. Mm -hmm. So, but when they are excited, they almost look like a cartoon because their eyes get very big and their round mouth gets very round. And so they look very strange when they are excited or afraid. But you will not probably see that at first. Mm. Mm. And the direction that those who do not necessarily want to align with the higher self, who would rather really work with the identities of the physical ego self, there is another civilization that will emerge, or they, there are different timelines, from my understanding. There are different timelines for, um, for, for different practices. Um, what will those timelines look like? The timelines we, where we do not have open contact. There are many timelines interacting right now in all parts of the universe. It's no different with your part of the universe. There are timelines interacting so that some people are protected from a knowledge they do not want or protected from the things they do not want to see. They have come to less technological timelines or more primitive timelines, if you want to call them that. 
then there are those that are rising which is everyone in essence but not everyone in deed mm -hmm. if you know what i mean mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so we will know that the timelines will interact with one another and those interactions with timelines will be what is the word i am looking for it is very going to be very vital for existence open contact timelines yes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because my, my understanding is there is actually going to be um, some kind of enslavement in the other timelines that do not have open contact. There is a lot of um, perversiveness that deepens in that sense. Um, and the open contact is a consequence of ascension in terms of our spiritual practice. Um, this there, is how there is I'm also coming. already those places where that are imprisoned, but it I would have to go into that in a very technical way to explain it to you. But there are other places that are not, and other beings that are not. Mm -hmm. There are many kinds of beings on your world, and so some of them are imprisoned, and some of them are not. Mm -hmm. But I cannot explain the circumstances behind that without going into a long history of the universe and the galaxy. Thank you so much, Jim. Is there anything else you'd like to say? I do. I would like you to tell us about the gathering. There is a gathering that's going to be happening in August this year in, in Rochester, yes. which <clears throat> you will be leading. Do you want yes. to say a bit about that in case we have those who may be interested in, 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 in joining uh, us? I'd love to see as many people as possible. It's going to be at it's going to be a oneness gathering, which means it's going to be more about getting to know each other, getting to know your star family, getting to know your soul family, getting to know how to connect with the world better. Uh, it'll be about a little bit about healing. It'll be a bit a little bit about understanding the the light codes and the different things that happen around the earth that have influence on us. Also, there'll be a couple classes, but not very many. But this is more about getting to know who you are in the spirit, in the oneness, in uh, the creativity, and who you are with everyone else, mm -hmm. and how to share in unity with everyone. And there will be, it's in a beautiful place. It's on Ananda uh, Lake Park in Canandaigua, New York. And it is a beautiful place. There's swimming. There's we have a we have rented out an entire lodge, and it's already half full. Mm -hmm. And we rented out some ca extra cam ca uh, cabins, and uh, it's possible that Rob Gothier will be there, mm -hmm. and who is another very, very good channel. And Karen Newman will also be there. Yes, yes, and she's a great channel as well. Yes. And Angie and Will. Yes, and yes, yes. That's brilliant. We'll all be there. And it's on the 8th to the 12th of August. Is it 8th, 8th through the 12th. Of and August. the price is $695, which is all included of food, uh, lodging, and all the classes. And if they want to get more information, it's classes at bucolo.org. Yes. Yes. Get more information. Kukulo.org. Yes. Uh, and I would welcome many to come because I think it is going to be a really joyous mm -hmm. occasion. I think it's going to be very calm. We're going to get to know each other very well. Mm -hmm. And there's also a lot of activation that takes place in these group sessions oh, yes. where you have a lot of light language channels will be there and... Um, the atmosphere allows us to really come, you know, align much, much quicker and much less with less. Oh, yes, it's a very open hearted yeah. get together. Mm -hmm. We will greet you with open arms. <laughs>
And since it's so far away, there is a payment plan. If you can't afford to do $695 right now, you can do $70 a month for six months. Hmm. Yes, brilliant. Thank you, Jim. Do you have any final words before we go today? I, I just want to thank you for having me here. And I enjoy your company. And I uh, enjoy what you your book. So you're very enlightened and I enjoy your company and it I'm I'm going to be seeing you at the gathering. Yes, yes, definitely. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you so much, Jim. You're welcome. Much love to you. <laughs> Have a great day. Thank you. And I would like to say thank you to our audience for joining us today. And I look forward to seeing you on the next episode of the Daily Soul Bites show. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you.